for decades since Israel annexed the Golan Heights. Now the Druze residents on that plateau have walked a virtual tightrope involved in Israeli life, even national service, while maintaining their Syrian identity and ways of life. Strong commercial and social academic ties to Damascus families, of course, on the other side of the border. The concerted efforts of successive Israeli governments to lessen those ties seemingly have made no difference, but in recent years, a quiet shift has taken place. The number of Golan Druze applying to become Israeli citizens is climbing upwards. Official government figures obtained by the organization Shomrim show that over the past five years, the number of citizenship requests by Druze residents of the Golan Heights has jumped from 75, just 75, back in 2017, to 239 in 2021. 2022 looks to be even higher. Just the first half of this year, 206 requests were submitted. So to get some more insight into what may be taking place in the community, we're joined by Professor Eyal Zisser, Vice Rector at Tel Aviv University. Thank you for joining us from your office here. I want to just highlight a little bit of the stats. It's around 21,000 Druze who live in these four towns in the Israeli Golan. The Interior Minister shows only about 4,300 are actually Israeli citizens today here. Characterize a bit, I mean, the Druze have a, a fairly disciplined society, especially when it comes to national uh, allegiance. So it's hard to believe this is just a generational shift. I mean, what's thought to be the reasons for this subtle but perceptible change? Well, you can see it, by the way, also in East Jerusalem, where uh, uh, when it comes to the question of the identity, everybody will tell you I'm a Palestinian. But when it comes to the question of uh, uh, what university to enroll in or uh, what high school and what kind of the final exam, everybody, for pragmatic uh, reasons, wants to so-called become Israeli. So this is the same case with the uh, um, with the Druze, a very pragmatic uh, community. Yeah. If you put pressure on them on the question of identity, they will all declare that they are Syrian, because you know this is uh, uh, all about survival. And one day, you know, maybe 100 years from today, Syria might come back and Israel may give up the Golan Heights, but for all practical uh, purposes, when it comes to the daily life, uh, you could see how they adjust to the new reality. At first, you know, uh, till lately, they were never involved in uh, any uh, terrorist activity against Israel. So they declared they are Syrians, but they were when it comes to the uh, reality, they were uh, residents of Israel and never uh, got involved in any uh, activity against Israel. Now there is the new stage. You know, look at what is happening in Syria. Look at what is happening to the Druze community inside Syria in the Mount Druze and the result in, and, and, and what is Syria? Does Bashar stand for Syria? So for all these uh, reasons, what we can see is the uh, adoption of a more pragmatic approach, more readiness to engage and get involved in Israeli life, because probably they know for the for the uh, coming future, <laughs> yeah, good question. they yes. will stay in Israel. I, I, like, yeah. I like how you mentioned yeah. maybe in 100 years, I mean, as recently as 2008 or so, it was a real possibility that the Golan Heights may suddenly again be a real bargaining chip, all pre the civil war, of course, in Syria. But that so that that sort of concern for all those communities along the border, realistic, very pragmatic, as you mentioned here. Obviously, the future is unknown. This uh, unstable situation in Syria playing a factor. But the, looking at the Druze in the region, I mean, they're across northern Israel. Uh, Lebanon, Syria, uh, big communities, you know, or, you know, relatively large communities spread around all those countries. But how involved or, or not involved have they been in the major regional conflicts? Well, you know, not as a community. Yeah. Uh, the Druze position was always, you know, each community in a certain country must be totally loyal to the country. This is to, take, to say that the Syrian Druze were totally loyal to the Syrian state and serving the Syrian army. This is to say that the Syrian, the Israeli Jews were totally loyal, more than some of the Jews, to the Israeli state and are serving in the IDF, we all know that, and the uh, Jews in Lebanon are loyal to 
Lebanon. At the same time, they are belong to the same community. So we can speak about a communal commitment and, and, and when uh, wherever there is something happening to the Druze in Syria, everybody is mobilized, but still in a certain framework. And, and as I said before, the Druze in Israel see themselves totally as loyal to the Israeli state. The problem with the Golan Heights is, as you rightly mentioned, for almost 20 years, every government in Israel said very clearly, even Netanyahu, we are to give these territories back to the Syrians. So they can't be sure about the commitment of the Israeli government to uh, uh, the Golan Heights. That's why we saw this hesitance among them. You can see for now how some would feel a little more secure that Israel's not about to hand the Golan back to whoever is in charge in Syria. So, Al Zisser, uh, Dr. Zisser, thanks for being with us from Tel Aviv University. Thank you.